शांति अंदर शिवम शांत पृथ्वी शांति One of Fiji's largest cities, located on the western side of the main island of Viti Levu. We are approaching from north, sailing inside the calm, shallow waters near the northwestern coast. We drop anchor in the wide bay just outside Port Denarau, where we will spend the next few weeks exploring the area, stocking up provisions and doing some boat repairs. To go on land, we dinghy to Denarau Marina, hosting hundreds of visiting yachts and mega yachts, as well as tourist boats. From here, we take the yellow bus to town. southeast of Denarau. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes to get there with the bus. The noisy streets are busy with people and cars lined with shops and restaurants. is about 50,000 and it looks like most of the locals here are Hindus with Indian descent. Poor Indians escaping famine and poverty in colonial India were brought to Fiji during the British colonial rule starting in the 1880s. They became indenture workers for the sugarcane plantation with five years work contracts with terrible working conditions and extremely low wages. Something like short-term slavery followed by racial segregation and oppression similar to the South African apartheid. By 1920, about 60,000 Indians had been brought to Fiji, promised to return or to stay and own land if they chose, after their five-year work contracts finished. Today, Fijians with Indian descent make almost half of the entire population in Fiji and dominate the largest cities like Suva and Nandi. The majority of businesses here are owned by Indian Fijians, selling colorful merchandise imported from India. The exotic fabrics are as beautiful and brightly colored as the coral reefs. Here I add a red and gold sari to my list of wishes. 
The majority of Indian Fijians are Hindus. During the colonial rule, the local Fijian people, like pretty much all the Pacific Islanders everywhere, were converted to Christianity by missionaries from Europe, except the Indo-Fijian Hindus. They refused to convert and have preserved their Hindu religion to this very day. Indo-Fijian Hindus built many temples in Fiji for prayer, marriages and funerals, as well as religious festivals and social events. We paid a visit to Sri Siva Subramania Hindu temple in Nandi, the largest Hindu temple not only in Fiji, but in the entire southern hemisphere. dad had to cover our legs to enter the sacred temple. My mom is okay with her long modest dress. We take off our shoes. Like the, the goat, our goat, they are not wearing uh, anything. So we have to, no possession in the way. Yeah. So when we go to, uh, to pray, we have to take off our shirt. Like we will uh, go back to our home like that. Then could wear this shirt and uh, yeah. like uh, everybody when you go to a church we have to dress properly then you go in the uh, inside like that. Uh, they have to take off uh, the shirt when they go in temple because it's uh, it's their religion in their religion that's how you go to temple and the meaning of it is that uh, the gods they didn't have any clothing and in a way no possessions so I suppose clothing represents some sort of possessions and wealth. So when you go shirtless, it's like you renounce all this. A priest performs a blessing for a new car. The Sri Siva Subramania Hindu Temple opened its doors in July of 1994, after 10 years of construction. Artists and craftsmen from India came to work on the colorful temple and its impressive ceiling frescoes, depicting scenes from the Hindu religion. Intricate wooden carvings of Hindu gods, kings and warriors were brought from India. The complex honors Lord Murugan, the god of the seasonal rains, and a statue of the Lord dominates the main temple. Other temples in the complex worship Ganesh, the elephant god, and Shiva, the supreme god.
Not far from the temple, on the streets of Nandi, we stumbled upon a procession of Hindus. It's Ganesh Chaturthi, a Hindu festival celebrating the birth of Lord Ganesh, the elephant-headed god, remover of obstacles and bestower of wisdom, son of Lord Shiva. Ganesha is the god of wisdom, prosperity and good fortune, the god of beginnings and the first deity to worship before any religious ceremony. His birthday is around the time of my mom's birthday, and so she spontaneously joins the celebration, singing and dancing on the streets, eating sweet treats. Oh. Am I supposed to give something? Yeah. No, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I just got some gifts. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So each Hindu shop has to do an offering for Ganesha. So today is the last day of the Ganesh Puja. It's once a year? Once in a year, yeah. Once in a year. Oh, thank you. Also, in Nandi, we met two epic nomads from Bulgaria, Magi and Svetin, walking and hitchhiking all over the world with a small tent, a few clothes and an enormous love and fascination for our planet and its people. They happened to be in Fiji for a few months and invited us for a visit at the house of a local man and his family, hosting them during their visit. Thus, we met Father Bartholomew, the first Christian Orthodox priest in Polynesia. So, so you are the priest of the Orthodox Church here? Yeah? Yes, yes. Oh, that's I amazing. Do, yeah. Hello. <laughs> Not far from the house, another Hindu celebration was taking place. It's the third and final day of a traditional Hindu wedding, a spectacular, colorful celebration where the most important ritual is performed by the bride and the groom. Saptapadi, the seven step ritual. Shamdi Brahma, Shamdi Sarvagam, Shamdi Shamdi Riva, Shamdi Saman, Shamdi Riva. They voluntarily hold hands near the fire to signify union and take seven steps. Each step is a promise to each other before the fire deity, in the presence of family and friends followed by a walk around the fire. After the seven step ceremony, the couple are considered husband and wife.